Ask Reddit by Karen the Manager. What was great advice 20 years ago, but definitely isn't now. In high school as part of one of my classes they brought in a lady who worked HR for some recruiting firm for a few days to teach us how to do resumes and cover letters and such and she told us even if a place has an option to apply online always go in person and pick up an application no one takes online applications seriously. I was actually told this by a seasoned, experienced older employee around 2011 or so while working a temporary position and seeking to apply for a permanent one which by the way included the possibility of a pension. I carefully filled out a thick application stack by hand and delivered it personally to HR. Turns out that due to some recently added rule, I was not eligible unless I went through the online application process, and no one told me until it was too late. It was probably better for my mental health in the long run to leave that job rather than feeling like I had to stay for the benefits. But the whole experience really soured me on trusting anyone's advice on anything ever. Always verify from the relevant source. My dad told me once, son you shouldn't schedule a single vacation day the first year of your job. It shows you're committed. I straight up told them I had a holiday book 6 months down the line and if that's cool. They were like. Sure tell me a month beforehand. Worked pretty well by yahoo stock don't forget to print out your directions from mapquest before you leave though it still makes sense download maps before you set out you need to memorize this cause you won't have the info accessible later the most important skill isn't knowing the right answer it's knowing how to find out the right answer and that's gotten much easier Generic dating advice. People always wonder how some people get to be so creepy but they forgot that they've been brought up by a generation who thought the best way to get a woman was aggressive flirting techniques, actual stalking and being overly possessive. Getting a diploma will secure your life. You're searching for a soulmate on the internet? Lord you must be insane. Met my wife on the internet about 12 years ago, and everyone thought I was making her up until we could afford to fly her out here. Then it was she's probably scamming you. If she's a scam, best one I ever got caught up in. Buy that house. Sure it seems weird that you qualified for such a high home loan but I'm sure they wouldn't offer it to you if you couldn't afford it. Deleted. 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 Get an arm loan on your house. Values go up like 10-20% each year and by the time the load adjusts, flip that house for a sweet profit. I'm so glad I got a fixed rate mortgage. Yeah, a 5.5% interest rate kinda sucks compared to the sub 3% rate I could have got with an arm at the time, but at least I know my payment will be the same forever. Well, at least until 2032 anyway. When you dial collect on the payphone, just say where you are, what time you need a ride then hang up as not to get charged. Bob we add a baby eats a boy. I remember when my dad told me as a teenager to never be the one to pursue a guy, because I'm a woman. Maybe that was to keep me safe in my youth. But I've since come to realize that most of the dudes who are worth being with are either shy or oblivious, and I have no choice but to make the first move. I'm going to admit I'm absolutely terrible at distinguishing if a woman is just being friendly with me or is actually into me and I think it's the same for a lot of guys. I generally assume a woman is just being friendly as I'd rather be wrong about that than potentially creep a woman out who's only being nice. So I really appreciate when women make the first move. Walk in, ask for the manager and give a firm handshake. That's how you get the job. These days, you can walk in, ask for the manager and he'll direct you to apply online. Then you won't get any response, or you'll get one six months later when HR turns over and the new guy gets around to denying everyone who applied. I once had a place call me almost two years after applying if I could come in for an interview. 
I was ready to answer this until I realized 20 years ago was 2002 and not 1992. If Smashing Pumpkins released 1979 today, it'd be called 2006. Spending whole day on the internet would never make you successful in life. Said my dad, you can't spend the whole day staring at your computer screen. Nobody is going to pay you to do that. Be loyal to your employer, because they will be loyal to you. I have no idea why this one stuck around so long. You would think from looking at the cataclysm that is much of the company towns in the Rust Belt this was obviously not true. Never meet someone from the internet. Everyone needs a college degree. Trade school is absolutely the way to go for some people, myself included. And I did both. Deleted. 20 years ago, don't meet up with people you met on the internet and don't get in cars with strangers. Today, get into the car with a stranger that you've summoned to your house using the internet. The first time I met my ingress team, like Pokemon Go, but competitive capture the flag, I was in a graveyard farming gear and got a message in app saying get in the grave van and, without thinking, I hopped in this grave van that came up behind me. If you ever travel back in time, don't touch anything. Yeah if I went back in time right now I'd touch and sneeze on all sorts of things lol I want a mulligan on this timeline. Stay away from the guy walking down the street having a full conversation with nobody. Now it's just airpods. I would still stay away from them. Get into teaching. You get summers off and good benefits. If you want a job, just walk into the place. As someone who does a bit of hiring, I don't even want to do the first interview in person let alone have you just show up. You can rest when you are dead. In my opinion the grind culture is harmful and leads to a lot of physical and mental illness. Stress induced illnesses have never been as bad as it is right now. Burnouts have never been as high as they are now. Mental health is plummeting. I understand that in some countries you have no choice but to grind to survive, but in developed countries I do not think society should encourage that mentality. Stress is a disease and this society is sick. I'm not from the US, and it's crazy to me how expensive the basic securities are over there. Housing, healthcare, education, commuting, all priced at premium and beyond. No wonder the people there have work as their main hobby. You won't always have a calculator in your pocket. The irony is even in the 80s, there were cheap calculator watches, see Marty McFly BTTF. Teachers have always been wrong about that. Till most people forget 20 years ago was 2002 and not 1982. A lot of the points raised were not true 20 years ago. Edit, awards. Thank you kind people. You didn't have to personally attack like that. Cut out fats from your diet because they make you fat. Just go to the mall and hand out your resume. Did this in 2013 with zero results. Go to college to get a good job. Get a master's degree and you can become a professor. Right now, you are lucky to be an adjunct. PhD is the new masters for academia. I feel you. It feels like in the current academic landscape. You need a PhD to be taken seriously and having a master's degree is regarded as the default setting for people. If your TV isn't working, try hitting it. Percussive maintenance still works at times. Go to college or you'll end up broke. Nowadays it's, go to college and you'll end up broke for years. High school is some of the best years of your life. Yeah, I might have believed that bullshit back then, but having lived an actual life between then and now, high school was nowhere near my best years. I hated high school and I was pretty depressed at the time, 
and the thought that those were supposed to be the best years of my life made me even more depressed. I'm glad that was wrong. If boys are mean to you, it's because they like you. You'll never run out of space with a 10 GBHD. Online college courses are stupid and will never catch on. I said this. I was a fool. If she says no, just be persistent. You'll wear her down eventually. Edited to at, I took the question to mean what was assumed to be good advice. Like, if it was asking what good advice 100 years ago was, it would include things like smoking cigarettes while are pregnant so you delivered smaller babies, or using cocaine to treat a teething baby. In hindsight, it's certainly not good advice. At the time, the culture thought it was good advice. Take your money and put it in a high interest savings account. Sure thing, should I be getting 0.5% interest or 0.8% interest on that? Putting your credit card information on the internet to buy things is dangerous. Don't get a job in programming because everything was getting outsourced to India. Why don't you call up, local business, and ask if they're hiring? Make sure you have a spare roll of fax paper. You have to learn how to do this because you can't expect to walk around with a calculator in your pocket for the rest of your life. This was real advice when I was in college. What degree you get doesn't matter, employers just want to know that you can stick with it for 4 years. I do still see some job adverts now that list degree any field as essential criteria. Don't download music illegally or the feds will show up and drag you off into the inky black night. You need to learn how to do this on paper because you won't always have a calculator with you. In fact, I'm a million times more likely to have a calculator on me than a pen and paper. You'll always need a set of encyclopedias. <laughs>